Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we have another banger for you. We're going to take a look at the growth and maturation of Kyle Hamilton from early in the season into late in the season. We're going to use two games from the same team, early in the season versus the Bengals, late in the season versus the Bengals. And we all know what happened versus the Dolphins, and pretty much 99% of the flock blamed Kyle Hamilton for that game. But still, young kid, he wasn't the only one, but there were some glaring mistakes in that Dolphins game, but I didn't use the Dolphins game. I wanted to use the same team to see the 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 growth, the difference in, as a player, how fast he moved, the the communication, and I took I think seven plays to to look at you know to show you how he changed, and now he's bumping back to safety. If he takes what he learned as a slot corner and apply some of that thing, apply some of those things to the safety position. I think we got a real player on our hands, man, a real player, especially when he can drop down and do some of those things in certain situations. So without further ado, uh, like the video, subscribe if you have not, and uh, let's get started. So this is from the first Bengals game. And again, we're going to talk about his growth and maturation. And we're going to use the same team. That way we can get a, a better picture of how much better he moved as he learned the system. And we all know, you know, what happened early in the game. I talked about it, you know, before the, the intro. But on this play right here, this in particular play right here, they're in a two high shell. You see Kyle highlighted. Um, it's really a, a version of cover two. And his eyes are on the QB, which you know he has the deep hash. He has everything from this this side of the field over. That's that that's his priority. All right, so now the next thing to do is to figure out the route concept. You got to figure out the route concept between these two people. And doing that, they got to fade out. That's what's coming. Eyes on the quarterback. Eyes on the quarterback. Reading it. Now he decides to take a peek at the route combo and see what's going on. When he peeks at the route combo. There's nothing he can do with this. So there's no no use of even worrying about that. There's, you know, the guys even own it. He, there's nothing he can do with it. So what I think he should be, he should instantly get deeper and wider. He should at least be where that circle is. Because potentially this fade is, you know, potentially about open. And he needs to be in a position where he can help out on it. But he's just playing a little slow. Playing a little slow. And then even though the ball is thrown the other way, what if Joe did throw this ball out here? Is Kyle in position to get over there and help with that? Now, this this DB may break it up or whatever. It may be out of bounds. But we're focusing on Kyle. Is he in position to get over there and help on this play? I think he'd be late. But this is from early in the season. All right, on this next one, same game, and you see a cover, well, a single high safety look, and that's Kyle in the middle. And you know McDonald did a bunch of disguise and stuff. And on this play, he takes off and runs to the bottom of the 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 field. What well, the film looks like it's some kind of cover two ish type deal, like like it may be two man. And this is where I'm talking about either not knowing the playbook, and he could be right in this instance, and somebody could be wrong. But looking, somebody else could be wrong. But looking at the film, it looks like he's wrong. He jumps to the bottom to cover the bottom hash, so it's looking like there should be a safety covering the top of the field. Now, if he's wrong, that means he should be staying in the middle because to me, it looks like man free. Because everybody else is matched up on somebody. Everybody else is matched up on somebody. Even Marcus is kind of trying to get over top to look like Hayden Hurst. Now, Marcus could be wrong. He could be this other deep safety. I'm not sure. But from my football knowledge, and I, and I could be wrong, but I think Hamilton should be in the middle. And this looks like cover one. With them, them doing a, some kind of bracket over here on this top side. So, again, early in the season, maybe not knowing the call or not, you know, not hearing an adjustment and just being out of position. Because what if something breaks to that spot right there? What if what if something was, was to hit in that big open spot? He's in no position to defend that. He's in no position. And what I, when I say something, in particular this route right here, he's in no position to defend that. 
So all he can do is just hopefully he can make the tackle and save a touchdown. Now fast forward to later on in the year, same team, same player, just later on in the year. And his play speed is a lot different. His play recognition is a lot different. It's just, and I think this is his only flaw for this game. And they kind of, the Bengals kind of guess, guess right on this. He's over the point. He's outside leverage on the number three guy. So he's in great position right here still on Tyler Boyd. But Boyd's route just happened to be an inside breaking route with all this other stuff going on to take coverage. Like that's go, that drag route by 88 is going to take him. This little post route by T. Higgins is going to take that safety. And with Kyle Hamilton have this outside leverage and Worley having outside leverage, the little end right route behind him, that that's just going to beat it. That's a great play design by the Bengals and great finish. He just missed the tackle. So to me, this is really one of the few flaws, and this is not even really a flaw that Kyle Hamilton had this game. See, because he's outside leverage, and when you outside leverage, the job is not to let guys get outside of you, and that's him and Worley. Um, Roquan and I can't tell who this is, maybe Mark Williams, has inside leverage. And they're taking the inside guys as they should. It's just great play design. And really all he can do is just make this tackle. He misses the tackle. So that's that's the fault in it. I would come here and you see him, you know, talking, communicating, uh, technically kind of in the slot. But you didn't see communication earlier. You didn't see a lot of talking and hand signaling, letting people, you know, know he know what he's doing and communicating what they got. And what you didn't see that earlier. And watch the aggression here. It's a quick screen. Recognizing it, seeing it. And I, and I missed this while putting it together. Look at his head. He bags up off his guy. Peeks over there and sees J. Maul bagging up for the screen and attacks it. Then he attacks it. He would not be uh, blocked by 16. He attacks the outside leverage. Roquan's attacking the inside leverage. And they get a tackle, uh, actually a tackle for a loss with the aggression. They're like a totally different player. Here we got, you know, still kind of in the slot position. Looking like faking like a blitz because he's a good blitzer also. But now we got him in man coverage. And some of the real twitchy guys he has problems with. But Tyler Boyd, he's right in his hip pocket. That's darn good defense on a pretty good slot receiver. Because we all know that the Bengals have the top set of wide receivers. That's pretty good man coverage on a, on a, a darn good slot receiver. So, again, that, we didn't see this type of stuff early in the season. As he got accustomed to the game and got to play more snaps and got more confident, he was able to play faster. And it's evident as in early in the season as to late in the season. He ain't got him over the slot, overboard, which we know he can kind of cover him a little bit. And watch the disguise. Coming from a standstill position, he's going to take the C gap. JPP is going to take the B gap. He's going to take the C gap. And JPP, you know, flushing the big gap, forces the run to the C. Kyle Hamilton's right there waiting. Right there waiting. So now all he's doing is just to make the tackle. And he makes the tackle on a very good running back in Joe Mixon. Very good running back. Don't miss it. It's a good job of execution. And blitzing from a standstill position, use that big frame. He kind of got a linebacker frame. That's what, 6'4", whatever he is. Use him. And just because he's moving like to straight safety this year i don't see why he can't do these type of things especially when we're in situations where we're in one high maybe he can't do it from a, from a two high shell but we get one high shells we definitely can see this type of stuff you know still in 2023 and i'm gonna end on this one this is a good job of route recognition reading the play and recognizing a route so he's over he's over jmar chase this time now with the motion, he kind of bumps back. Playing a little zone. You see, it's, he's he's on Hurst, you know, because he kind of got that hook curl area. So he's eyeing Hurst. Cuts his eyes to Hurst, sees what's going on. But then, you know, Joe's waiting on Hurst. He peeks his eyes at Joe. Realizes that the ball's being thrown. Then he just sticks his foot in the ground. Great T-step. Look at the T-step on that left foot. You know, a lot of people don't teach the T-step anymore, but look, it's perfect right there. Perfect. So now he can attack. He can push off of it and go. He sees Joe throwing. And he just attacks the ball. Has a PBU. Didn't go for the bait. Real patient. Trusts his instincts. 
instincts that have grown since game one, two, and three, where he didn't look very well, came back to the end of the year and was a vital asset to a defense that played really, really well every game because they had to because the offense didn't do jack you know what. I appreciate you guys for taking the time out of your day to spend a little time with me. If you want to support the channel, there are multiple ways to do so. Uh, Patreon.com backslash sip the talent will get you into our Discord server. Also gets you into our fantasy football league. And it also, if you join the $10 member, which we call the Gunslinger member, that'll get you the sip to tally purple Kool-Aid chalice, which you see us using every Monday on the roundup, which we're going to use during the season to toast Ravens victories touchdowns and key moments within the game so i appreciate you guys for coming out you could have been anywhere in the world but you chose to be here with me and i'll see you next time peace